Hi there, this is David Pringle with PringlePhoto.com. I uh, wanted to follow up my last uh, review with a new one for the same app. <laughs> uh, mere days after I released my video on Snapseed, Google updated the app from the ground up and gave us a whole brand new thing to work with. Uh, it's Actually, it's well done. I like the revisions that they've made. It just takes a little bit of getting used to. The first thing you'll notice is the, the new logo. Uh, which I think the change to make it a little bit different than the photos logo, which is the um, rainbow flower down there. Uh, so it's just a single leaf now instead of the um, multicolor logo that it was before. So it's a little bit different, a little easier to find once you know what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and open Snapseed. Instead of opening to the sample image, it now opens up to this screen. Uh, your only option is open photo at the bottom. It's hidden in the tower. And uh, you can choose to open something from your device, use the camera, or just open the last image that you've uh, taken with your device. I'm going to choose open with device. Uh, the new iCloud takes just a little bit longer to load photos, so the app will seem to, hold, to hang for a second. I'm going to click favorites. I'll choose this one to work with. And I like it, so I'll check, check the uh, use on the top right. Here's the image I wanted to work with. I'm just going to show you how some of the new tools work. Um, but before I do that, uh, if you watched my last video, of course, you know I always start with tuning my overall image. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Hit the toolbar at the bottom right. Uh, it brings up all of your tools. But before I do that, I do want to show you uh, the new things on the screen here. If you choose the open on the top left, it will actually take you back to pick a new image to work with. If you've made changes, it will ask you if you want to save it uh, or if you just want to discard and start all over again. Uh, the bottom left is a histogram, which some of you who have worked with Photoshop uh, will appreciate that you can see exactly how far you're pushing your thresholds. Um, on the bottom right, of course, is where you uh, bring up your toolbars. See the little pencil in the circle there. And the top right is the save button. One thing I do want to caution you with uh, is that one of the new changes is that it just saves over the original image. So if you don't want to do that, you're definitely going to want to choose save a copy. Uh, um, you basically uh, then are making a second image, the one that you've modified, and you're leaving the original one intact. So if you don't care about the original one, just choose save. Otherwise, you're going to save a copy. The uh, little circle, the zero inside the box there, it's your history. If you look at the bottom right, it says original. Uh, if you've made lots of changes, you'll see them. They stack on top of one another, uh, and you can go back and revisit and change each one, or you can discard a change that you've made. It's nice to have a history. We didn't have one before, so that gives you something to work with. Uh, if you want to go back and get rid of something you've already done. So uh, the top right, the three buttons, just a few more choices for you, sharing, open, and etc. And so let's bring up the tools here. A few new ones. You got the transform tool, um, basic uh, perspective shift changes, the brush tool, which lets you do darkroom style dodging and burning, a vignette tool, which is fairly uh, self-explanatory, lets you darken or lighten the edges of the film, uh, spot repair, which is a really rudimentary touch retouch tool, takes up small blemishes. Uh, it doesn't work well for anything larger than something like a pimple uh, or a dust spot on your lens. Um, don't try to take out power lines with it, it just won't work. Um, so under the filter section you've got the lens blur, uh, which simulates the blurring of the edges of a less expensive lens. It used to be called center focus. Tonal contrast, which lets you adjust the contrast within each tone, your highlights, mid-range uh, mid tones, and uh, your shadows. Glamour Glow, I'll show you how that works. It softens the overall image. Grainy Film, of course, simulates film grain. Noir is an old-fashioned, moody, black-and-white photography style. And Frames, while not a new tool, it does have a few extra options. So I'm going to start with tuning my image top left. And the tools work the same, up and down, lets you choose which tool you're working with. And left and right is how you make your adjustments. If you have any questions, go back to my previous video. I do explain some of these tools in a little bit more detail. 
Um, so I'm going to drag the brightness down quite a bit. I'm going to bring up the ambiance and the contrast. If you notice my work before, I tend to really like contrast and I really love saturation. My work tends to be um, a little on the surrealistic side, but this actually is closer to how it looked in real life um, because the light just washed it out so much with the uh, iPhone camera. And I'm going to deepen my shadows. If you look at the histogram, I've actually cut off part of the threshold um, because I want to get rid of some of those. Um, if you look in the shadows as I bring them up, you can see some artifact. I'm just going to get rid of them and and literally cut some of them off so that it goes to almost black. Highlights, just going to drag that down just a little. And warmth, just bring a little warmth in there. There we go. Uh, since I've gotten something I like to work with, there's a check mark on the bottom right. Something else I want to point out, the Auto Adjust tool used to be its own button in the main menu. They've actually added it inside the Tune Image button, um, inside the Tune Image tool, uh, Auto Adjust in the center. I don't tend to use it very often, but if you want a quick fix, sometimes it works for you. So check mark takes us back out to the main screen. If you see now at the top right, the uh, little square has a one in it. If you look at the bottom right, you now see original and tune image. The, so it stacks your uh, corrections up so that you can see uh, what you've got and how you can work with it. I'm gonna go in here. I'm going to show you the transform tool. Um, just like anything else, you can pick what you want to do, perspective, uh, vertical, horizontal, and rotate. So what these would help you with, say you were uh, took a picture of a skyscraper, uh, you would want to come down to um, the vertical and drag it down so that it squares it up just a little bit. There are better tools for this, but if you want to make a big, uh, quick correction, there you go. I'm going to click X because I don't like any of those corrections. I just wanted to demonstrate. Vignette tool, I'm not going to go over that because you already know how to use that. And the spot tool, I just wanted to show you. It, uh, If you look in the bottom left, there's the little branch and the little stone. I'm just going to touch that. It took it out. It's a relatively nice tool for minor corrections. It won't let you make... Uh, take out large sections of a photograph. Like if I go to the graffiti up on the wall here, it'll take out part of it, but it also pulls part of the other wall down. So it's not a very good way to make large corrections, um, but it is a good way to get rid of small blemishes. I'm going to, you have an undo button as well, so it takes away that correction. So if you miss mark a spot, you can actually step back and not lose the other corrections that you've made. I'm going to click X, go back out of that. Uh, lens blur, again, uh, it's a different button, but it's the same tool. It used to be called center focus. Um, they do give you a few extra options in here. You can choose a style you can work with. Um, and say you wanted to work with uh, a heart, say you were working on a photo of a portrait. Um, it doesn't actually show you the heart, um, but it does tend to use that shape overall. So it's not very distinct. Uh, I'm not very much a fan, uh, so. Um, but if you're using, uh, if you're using it to try to draw your attention to your subject, it can be done uh, fairly well. But again, it's not for every image. Click X, back out. Uh, tonal contrast is something I want to point out to you. Uh, you can actually choose which tone you want to increase the contrast in. So uh, sh start with the low tones. It's going to be the easiest for you to see because the artifact is just going to pop out. So if you look at the ceiling, it's uh, adding contrast to the ceiling. And we're now looking at a lot of artifacts. So I don't really like that. I'm just going to bring that back to zero. You can adjust your mid-tones contrast. Uh, and you can adjust your high tones contrast. So uh, with certain images, it works, some it doesn't. Uh, it works particularly well on portraits of men. Um, it's, it used to be very difficult to do uh, Photoshop technique, but this is one of the uh, apps that's brought that down to uh, most users. Uh, it really does make a nice portrait. Use that with the uh, structure tool and you can get a very, um, gritty feel uh, portrait, especially of men. doesn't work very well on women. Uh, Glamour Glow, brand new to, uh, filter here for us. 
and one that I absolutely love. Uh, Nick Software uh, had a version for Photoshop that I used to use on a regular basis, uh, but since uh, Google bought out uh, Nick Software, they've put this tool into Snapseed. And if I'm at zero, that's the original image, so I'm going to bring it up and you're going to see that it actually starts to push the blacks down and blow out some of the highlights and everything just becomes a little bit dreamier as we go along. So uh, it's really cool for like shafts of light kind of photos or a portrait of a woman. You can kind of soften it up just a little bit. I like just a little bit of it on a lot of images. It just brings in that surrealism. And I'm going to click OK on the check mark. Um, the grainy film, that's pretty self-explanatory. Nor I'm going to show you that. Um, because it does look different, it wasn't a tool we had before. It's different than black and white because it tends to give you uh, the feel of the old black and white movies um, or some of the older films that didn't have any lati uh, latitude at all. So you can choose different styles. You can go across the bottom here and pick one that you like. And then um, you can adjust like the lightness, um, the wash, the grain of course and filter strength so that you can get a look that makes you feel like it's a really good antique look again it doesn't work on every image but it does have some nice qualities so again we're um, those are some of the new things I just wanted to show you in frames though we do have a few new things like um, acid washes uh, some looks of like contact prints um, film styles and some some more acid washes um, just some new filters that they didn't have before that are now there for us to use uh, one of the things that I wanted to put out a little more information on is the history palette uh, those of us who are more familiar with Photoshop were used to being able to go back and change things at will uh, the new version of Snapseed includes a very nicely done history palette and I wanted to show you just how um, powerful it is and how you can use it quickly to go back and make changes to an image. If you haven't saved your image, then you can go back to the history and make changes. So this is the image I was working on. If I were to close it, save it and close it and come back, it would be, um, it would have no edits for me to go back and correct. So you have to do this while you're in the image the first time. Now, for example here, I've applied a lot of extra filters that I think are a little far out of line and not to my taste. So what I'm going to do is, if you see at the top right, a uh, little square, this is eight in it. I've made eight different corrections, and they'll pop up on the right side. Uh, you have the option here of uh, trashing the entire layer, editing the mask, or changing the settings. So, grainy film, I don't like it. I'm going to go ahead and click the trash can and delete it. That takes us back. Now, if you wanted to see how something is affecting it, like uh, the drama filter that's uh, highlighted right now, if I want to see what it looks like without it, I only have to go to the correction before it. So I'm going to click Glamour Glow. And now that shows me the difference between drama and the Glamour Glow correction. Um, if I don't like the drama filter, I can just go ahead and delete it, or I can edit it, which is the little sliders, and I can choose filter strength and decrease it or increase it however I want to apply it, or I can choose different presets. Again, it's whatever adjustment you want to make, it just saves it back in your history. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that again, and we're back to Glamour Glow. Now you can delete these out of sequence as well. This is cropped, and I don't really care for the crop. So I'm going to click on the crop icon. I'm going to click on it one more time, and I'm going to click the trash can. Now that deletes it out of there. You see it, you're only seeing from the details up. Again, I'm going to add in one thing at a time until I see everything that's there. Now all of this is still applied to your image. It's just not visible. So uh, if you wanted to make changes, you can go in here and do that. You can go all the way back to see the original, or you can jump back to see where you were. And again, you're going to want to uh, 
you can discard all of your changes or you can copy them uh, or you can go out to your main screen here and you can save your image now remember save a copy unless you don't want the original the original image uh, otherwise it overwrites your original original image and you have uh, no ability to go back and change it anyway thanks for joining me this is David Pringle hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll catch you next time